morning, staffers. Good morning, entrepreneur thought leaders. My name is Suzanne Morrigan. and I am the Chief Accountant and Chief Profit Advisor here at Marcus CPA. And um, today I wanna talk about a very important topic that I think is hitting the entrepreneur community very hard, and that is the topic of debt. And I really wanna talk about the profit first stance on debt. Now, right now we're in the COVID-19 world, and a lot of us are working from home. We're in the shelter in place for, to protect ourselves, protect our neighbors, and really, less in the curve right now. But what I'm seeing from a lot of entrepreneurs are they are getting indenuated with requests for increasing debt, whether that be SBA loans or that be um, increasing lines of credit or increasing credit cards. Um, especially profit first entrepreneurs are very, very big targets for debt because one, they're low risk. They have great cash balances on their on their balance sheet and great cash positions. And so bankers are naturally attracted to them because pretty much they're they are low risk candidates for lending. But today I want to talk about the debt from a profit first perspective. And I'm going to share a video with you from our private Facebook group. And I'm also going to put in the link for you. And that private Facebook group is particularly for profit first. And we do have an upcoming workshop that's scheduled on April 6th um, through the Facebook Live community that will show you how to implement profit first in your business. It's going to last from April 6th to April 10th. And our goal is to really equip you to do that in your business. And um, you guys are completely welcome to join. I'll put the link below so that you can definitely get the details on that. But today I wanna talk about debt because um, a lot of entrepreneurs that I'm talking to, they're seeing debt as a security blanket, meaning that I don't know how long this is gonna last. I don't know how much work is gonna be in my pipeline or what the demand is gonna be in my business for my customers. And I wanna make sure that I take care of things, that I'm able to pay my bills, that I'm able to keep my employees paid. And they're seeing this debt as a security blanket. So kind of that security blanket that'll be there in the what if, what happens type of world. And today I wanna, talk about debt from a staffing perspective. Now, I understand staffing firms, you know, a lot of times when they're growing and scaling and they're, they're entering into new contracts that are of different volume that they've entered in before, sometimes they are required to factor or get a line of credit in order to cover those payroll expenses that occur in between that period of having an employee placed out in the field and having to pay that employee versus being able to collect from the client. And that line of credit really smooths that flow for them. And I wanna talk about debt, meaning that if you would take out debt now, what is the return on investment on that debt? What is the ROI? So if you are in healthcare staffing right now and you're placing a large volume of candidates in hospitals um, and clinics due to, due to the COVID-19, and there's a correlation between incurring that debt today and revenue that's gonna be associated with the work that's being done today, then that potentially is good debt, right? Because I'm recurring this debt because I have a huge project. I am meeting a nation's demand and I will be compensated for that in terms of revenue. So ROI on that debt. Now, if you are a staffing company now and you are applying for debt, and let's say that there isn't an increase in your business, there isn't increased revenue, you're literally getting debt to cover current expenses, to keep employees on payroll, give them busy work so that you know you, you can just kind of keep them afloat until things turn over, I want you to consider what is the return on investment on that debt. Now, if you are just keeping people on payroll and you're incurring expenses, there may not be a return on investment on that, right? And so that potentially is not good debt. So when you're thinking about debt and incurring that debt today, think about what is the correlation between that debt today that I'm incurring and the return on investment I can directly correlate to that debt. How does that include, increase my return on investment? How does that make my business better right now? And how can I actually tie that into revenue generation? So I am gonna go ahead and share our video in our private Facebook group. Um, definitely if you wanna join us in the workshop, it's a free workshop on implementing Profit First on April 6th, please go ahead and click on that link. Join us, we'd love to have you and I hope you enjoy the video and I love your feedback. Hello, Profit First entrepreneurs and thought leaders. And, and I normally hate to go on live twice, but um, I am going on live because I'm getting a lot of questions from my clients during this time regarding the profit first stance on um, debt. And especially when um, economic times are starting to take a downturn, stock markets are starting to go down, and 
apparently debt is becoming readily available because of SBA loans. And my clients are asking me, so what exactly is the profit first stance on debt? And as a profit first entrepreneur with financial obligations, with employees and employee loyalty, what is the stance on profit first for acquiring debt to meet short term obligations with employees that may not be working? And, and, and as an entrepreneur, this is a hard question. This is a hard question because you know, a lot of us see our employees as family members. I mean, they show up for us, they go above and beyond in many cases for us, and there's a loyalty when times get hard. And I really want to take that opportunity to really address this because I know that for a lot of entrepreneurs out there, it's causing a lot of anxiety. And um, I really want to address this topic to let you know what our stance is and also, you know, I definitely want to hear your comments on it. So when it comes to debt, I find that a lot of entrepreneurs find debt to be addictive. And although there's an, an, a mental promise that, hey, if I borrow money, I will pay it off, I would say in many, many cases, it tends not to happen that way. And so the profit first stance on acquiring new debt during economic recessions is that we do not recommend that our entrepreneurs take on additional debt. Instead, we say that, you know, we, we recommend that our entrepreneurs pivot in this situation. So if you are in a service-based industry and there are no more opportunities to service, which you have employees on your payroll, that if you have to take out debt to continue to hold these employees, that is not necessarily the right thing to do in the long term for yourself, for your company, or even from the employee standpoint. Because if you will take out debt now, when times turn around, although in our mind we think there might be opportunity to really go beyond this, a lot of times what we're doing is we're cutting our ankles for our future, meaning that when it comes to being able to give our employees promotions or raises or even be able to meet cash flow obligations when we do have those opportunities, we're not going to be necessarily be able to do that if we're levers in debt. But um, instead, and also for those of you guys that are already doing profit first, let's say you have a tax account set up, and we're going to go in that in more detail later on. If you already have a tax account set up, do not dip into the taxes. Now, I know one of the things that is coming up now is, you know, hey, my taxes, those payments aren't going to really be due until June 15, July 15, right? Because I just got a 90-day extension. And there's a temptation to go ahead and dig into those tax accounts to cover those short-term obligations to pay those employees that may not actually be working right now. And then, But what I want to just kind of remind you guys is that those taxes are still out there. That obligation is still out there. So do not get in a situation where you're dipping into that tax account to cover obligations. Instead, take this time to look at Look at your expenses. What's working for you? What's not? What has return on investment? What's the ROI on this? So if you've got fixed costs that are going to advertising or things that you know you may not be using, like memberships and dues, this is the opportunity to take a chance and go back and look at those and go, what is really giving me the ROI that I need? And maybe this is a time to cut those expenses in order to increase the cash flow. Now, interest rates are at a record-breaking low, right? Um, the 10-year treasury a couple of weeks ago hit the 10-year low. So the rate to borrow for banks is extremely low, and so they are passing that on. Now, if you do have debt right now, what we're encouraging you to do is consider refinancing. So not necessarily taking out new debt, but finding lower interest, less expensive debt to refinance current rates like credit cards or things that you may currently have to get a lower rate on those. So that's what we're we're really, really recommending from that standpoint. And definitely avoid taking on new credit card debt in this. I'd rather you scale back. If you're not using it, do not continue to have it. It's better to take a furlough on those expenses and also maintain strong personal finances during this time. So I just wanted to jump online real quick and share some tidbits on the profit first standpoint of debt, especially as it becomes readily available in this economic recession. So until next time, I'll see you guys next week.